Hi everybody, uh, my name is John Sperry. I'm the CEO and founder of InMoment. I'll be talking about companies I've been involved with starting, uh, I've been involved with working at, and then I've been involved with founding. Uh, both the, these companies I'll be talking about are venture-backed companies versus bootstrap companies. Uh, one of the key things I want to try to get across today is the myth that somehow you have to go out and raise money to be successful and that there's a lot of benefits to bootstrapping your business first and proving those pieces out. I also have some little tidbits I think you might find interesting as lessons learned and, and uh, other things which I prefer you not to have to learn <laughs> and I went through myself. I think one of the big kind of aha moments that people have after I, I, I give my presentation and I've, I've given this presentation uh, up and down to different universities in the state is that they, people believe that in order to start a business you somehow have to raise money. Now, that seems like the important thing to do, but there's dangers with raising money, really scary dangers. And I'll point out some of the dangers of raising money, especially raising money too early, and in raising the wrong kind of money with the wrong kind of what I would call dangerous terms. And bring some of the light to venture money. Venture money can be powerful, and I might have some of my venture back you know, investors in the room, <laughs> but at the same time, there's importance that, that as you go out kind of a naively raising money, uh, there's some dangerous things. And I'll share some real life experiences and some good experiences and, and some scary ones I've seen happen to friends where uh, they've, well, frankly, lost their shirts as they thought they were doing the right thing by raising money. I found it in a moment uh, back in 2002 in the spring, uh, shortly after. Uh, a dot-com company I was involved with helping start had blown up. That was, a, I think, a, a good common theme. A lot of dot-com uh, dot-coms blew up. Matter of fact, uh, I was reading an article in Inc. Magazine uh, right after tax day, right after we'd closed the doors in this other business, and it said that 600 businesses had uh, dot-coms had closed their doors that quarter. Or, of course, that my previous company being one of those. And so I was sitting around thinking, well, what am I going to do next? There's 600 people looking for the exact same job that I had. Uh, and because there's, you know, I was a CTO and I was looking for, you know, what do I go as another CTO, a chief technology officer. And it was that moment where I started researching, going out and talking to friends and trying to see if there's any kind of opportunities because I was going, wow, it's going to be kind of hard to find a job. And, and that's when I ran into somebody I hadn't seen since my days back in college. And he was telling me about how he had this mystery shopping business where they would go out and collect feedback uh, regarding a hotel or a restaurant. And then they report it back to the, to the store managers. And I said, so wait a second, so you're paying someone to eat the food and tell you how it tastes. I, I remember when I was a college student, if anybody paid me to eat food, it always tasted good. <laughs> the free food tastes better. So we came up with the idea at that point in time to say, well, let's collect the experience from the guest, which I know this seems like such a duh thing, but it is a duh thing. Listen to what your guests say and use that to run your business. That's what we do. Last year, we collected 140 million reviews from our guests. To kind of put that in perspective, Yelp in their 11-year history has collected 75 million reviews. We collected almost double that last year alone. So we use the voice of the customers to help businesses steer their way to success. I think uh, one of the most interesting things that businesses find as they go through and start listening to the data we collect too many times they feel they need to ask questions of the customer to be able to understand what the customer's thinking. Well, that, that tends to be an interrogation. Uh, we tell them, you should really listen. Don't interrogate. Listen to what the customer has to say. And what they tell you actually is what's important to them. So that first thought when you say, tell me about your experience, that's what was top of mind for the customer. That's what was important to the customer. That's what's important to you and me as we go out anywhere and have any kind of experience. I think that's the thing that's exciting about our business and what we do. My mom asks, what is it that you do for your business? And I'm like, well, I'm in the spile business, mom. She goes, what do you mean? I said, well, we're in the business of making sure that customers have great experiences and they walk away smiling. It's a great business to be in.